Hey guys, welcome back to Storytime with Mr. Gavin. I remember last week we started Crenshaw, um, and we're gonna keep going with that. Um, last week when we left off, we met Jackson and his sister Robin. They were playing a game um, and found some magic jelly beans. Uh, we also met Crenshaw, uh, who's Jackson's imaginary friend, Cat. So let's pick up from there. Chapter five. The first time I met Crenshaw was about three years ago, right after first grade ended. It was early evening, and my family and I had parked at a rest stop off a highway. I was lying on the grass near a picnic table, gazing up at the stars, blinking to life. I heard a noise, a wheels-on-gravel skateboard sound. I sat up on my elbows. Sure enough, a skater on a board was threading his way through the parking lot. I could see right away that he was no, or that he was an unusual guy. He was a black and white kitten, a big one, taller than me. His eyes were the sparkly color of morning grass. He was wearing a black and orange San Francisco Giants baseball cap. He hopped off his board and headed my way. He was standing on two legs, just like a human. Meow, he said. Meow, I said back, because it seemed polite. He leaned close and sniffed my hair. Do you have any purple jelly beans? I jumped to my feet. It was his lucky day. I just happened to have two purple jelly beans in my jeans pocket. They were a little smushed, but we each ate one anyway. I told the cat my name was Jackson. He said, yes, of course it is. I asked him what his name was. He asked me, what do I want his name to be? It was a surprising question, but I already figured out he was a surprising guy. I thought for a while. It was a big decision. People care a lot about names. Finally, I said, Crenshaw would be a good name for a cat, I think. He didn't smile, because cats don't smile. But I could tell he was pleased. Crenshaw it is, he said. Chapter 6. I don't know where I got the name Crenshaw. No one in my family has ever known a Crenshaw. We don't have any Crenshaw relatives or Crenshaw friends or Crenshaw teachers. I've never been to Crenshaw, Mississippi or Crenshaw, Pennsylvania or Crenshaw Boulevard in Louisiana or in Los Angeles. I never read a book about a Crenshaw or seen a TV show with a Crenshaw in it. Somehow, Crenshaw just seemed right. Everybody in my family was named after somebody or something else. My dad was named after his grandpa. My mom was named after her aunt. My sister and I weren't even named after people. We are named after guitars. I was named after my dad's favorite guitar. It was designed by a manufacturer called Jackson. My sister was named after the company that made my mom's guitar. My parents used to be magicians, starving magicians. As, my parents used to be musicians, starving musicians is what my mom called it. After I was born, they stopped being musicians and became normal people. Since they'd run out of instruments, my parents named our dogs after famous singers called Aretha Franklin. That was after Robin wanted to name her fairy princess Cutie Pie, and I wanted to call her Dog. At least our middle names came from people and not instru instruments. Orson and Mary Bell were my dad's uncle and my mom's great-grandma. Those folks are dead, so I don't know if they're good names or not. Dad says his uncle was a charming curmudgeon, which I think means grumpy with some niceness thrown in. Honestly, another middle name might have been better, a brand new one, one that wasn't already used up. Maybe that's why I like the name Crenshaw. It felt like a blank piece of paper before you draw on it. It was an anything is possible kind of name. Chapter seven. I don't exactly remember how I felt about Crenshaw the day we met. It was a long time ago. I don't remember lots of stuff about what happened when I was young. I don't remember being born or learning to walk or wearing diapers, which is probably not something you want to remember anyway. My memory is weird. I remember getting lost at the grocery store when I was four, but I don't remember getting found by my mom and dad, who were yelling and crying at the same time. I only know that part because they told me about it. I remember when my little sister first came home, but I don't remember trying to put her in a box so we could mail her back to the hospital. My parents enjoyed telling, me, telling people that story. I'm not even sure why Crenshaw was a cat and not a dog or an alligator or a Tyrannosaurus Rex with three heads. When I try to remember my entire life, it feels like a Lego project where you're missing some of the important pieces, like a robot minifigure or a monster truck wheel. You do the best you can to put things together, but you know it's not quite like the picture on the box. It seems like I should have thought to myself, Wow, a cat is talking to me, and that is not something that usually happens at a highway rest stop. But all I remember is thinking how great it was to have a friend who liked purple jelly beans as much as I did. Chapter 8 
A couple of hours after the mysterious Joey being appearance during Cereal Ball, my mom gave Robin and me each a grocery bag. She said they were for our keepsakes. A bunch of our things are going to be sold at a yard sale on Sunday, except for important stuff like shoes and mattresses and a few dishes. My parents were hoping to make enough money to pay back some rent, and maybe the water bill too. Robin asked, what's a keepsake? My mom said it, it's an object you treasure. Then she said things that don't really matter as long as we have each other. I asked what her keepsakes were and my dad's. She said probably their guitars would be at the top of the list and maybe books because those are always important. Robin said she would bring her Lyle book for sure. My sister's favorite book in the world is The House on East 88th Street. It's about a crocodile named Lyle who lives with a family. Lyle likes to hang out in the bathtub and walk the dog. Robin knows every word of the book by heart. Later at bedtime, my dad read the Lyle book to Robin. I stood at her bedroom door and listened to him reading. He and my mom and Robin and Aretha were all squished on her mattress. It was on the floor. The wooden parts were going to be sold. Come join us, Jackson, my mom said. There's lots of room. My dad is tall and so is my mom, and Robin, Robin's mattress is tiny. There wasn't any room. I'm good, I said. Looking at my family all there together, I felt like a relative from out of town. Like I belonged to them, but not as much as they belonged to each other. Partly that was because they all looked so much alike, blonde and gray-eyed and cheerful. My hair and eyes are darker, and sometimes so is my mood. Emptied out, it didn't look like Robin's room anymore, except for her pink lamp and the marks on the wall that showed how much she had grown, and the red spot on the carpet where she spilled cranberry apple juice. Robin was practicing her t-ball batting, and she got a little carried away. Swish, slash, splash, sploosh, read my dad. Not sploosh, daddy, Robin said. Smoosh? Splish? Swash? Stop being silly, she said. She poked him in the chest. It's swoosh, swoosh, I tell you. I said that I did not think a crocodile would enjoy taking a bath. I just read the whole library book about reptiles. My dad told me to go with the flow. Did you know that you can hold a crocodile's jaw closed with a rubber band? I asked. My dad smiled. I wouldn't have been the first person to test that theory. Robin asked my mom if I had a favorite book when I was little. She didn't ask me because she was pouting about my bathtub comment. My mom said Jackson really liked A Hole is Too Dig. Remember that book, Jackson? We've read that to you a million times. That's more like a dictionary than a made up story, I said. A brother is to help you, my mom said, which is a line from the book. A brother is to bug you, said Robin, which is not a line from the book. A sister is to drive you slowly insane, I replied. The sun was beginning to set. The sky was tiger colored with stripes of black clouds. I had to get my stuff ready for the yard sale, I said. Hey, stick around, dude, said my dad. I'll read a hole is to dig, assuming we can find it, that is. I'm way too old for that book, I said, even though it was the first thing I'd put in my keepsakes bag. Lyle, one more time, Robin said. Please, 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 please. Dad, I asked, did you buy some purple jelly beans? Nope. Then where do they come from? The one in Robin's t-ball cap. It doesn't make any sense. Robin went to Kylie's birthday party yesterday, said my mom. Did you get them there, sweet pea? Nope, Robin said. Kylie hates jelly beans. And anyway, I told you they were magic, Jackson. There's no such thing as magic, I said. Music is magic, said my mom. Love is magic, said my dad. Rabbits in a hat are magic, said Robin. I would put Krispy Kreme donuts in the magic category, said my dad. How about the smell of a new baby, asked my mom. Kittens are magic, Robin yelled. Indeed, said my dad, scratching Aretha's ear. And don't forget dogs. They were still going at it when I shut the door. Sorry for that interruption. I forgot to turn my walkie-talkie off, but that is where we're going to stop today. Um, as always, make sure you check out my story, Miss Cowan's story. Uh, check out our morning meeting. They're all on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page. Um, and until then, I will talk to you guys next week with another couple chapters of Crenshaw. See ya.